Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers, I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today I'm going to be listing my top five favorite 90s comic book movies. That's right everybody, thanks for checking out the video, and today on Robbie's Top 5, I'll be ranking my top five comic book movies from the 1990s. You know, in the last like 20 years or so, we've really had, we could call it a renaissance almost, if you will, in comic book movies. Like there are so many out all the time. But flash back to the 80s and the 90s where there were very few and far in between. But the movies that came out in the 90s, they had a lot of missteps, whether it was with clunky CG or not trusting the source material. There were a lot of missteps in a lot of 90s comic book movies, but there are some shining examples of the path that was being blazed that would eventually lead to such hits like X-Men, Spider-Man, and then on into this new MCU era of films where we're getting like not just so many comic book movies, out of nowhere, we're getting multiple Marvel movies a year, multiple DC movies a year. That didn't happen back in the day, but without the missteps of certain movies, without the success of other movies, you wouldn't have what we have today. So let's go back and let's celebrate the top five movies, comic book movies of the 1990s. At number five, we've got Dick Tracy from 1990. This one was directed, produced, and starring Warren Beatty. This movie blew me away when I was a young one. 1990, I'm like nine years old, and this got me into Dick Tracy. The action figure line, um, the movie itself, having Madonna in it, having Warren Beatty in it. It was a big star-studded cast. It had amazing production design, superb makeup effects. This movie still gets me today. Yeah, overall, there's plenty of things about it that we can knit and pick at, but like I said, that production design, those makeup effects, and that cast, that was absolutely amazing, and it brought Dick Tracy into the popular conscious yet again, and still remains, at least in a nostalgic type sense, is something that we remember. Like I said, it had Madonna in the movie, it had Al Pacino in the movie, so many freaking people were in this movie, and it was great. And what they did was they captured visually I would say for certain, the look and feel of the comic book. I love this movie, still holds up for me today. Coming soon on PCP Movie Night. At number four, Batman, The Mask of the Phantasm from 1993. Batman the Animated Series to me is still the best interpretation and coalescing of the Batman mythology all in one beautiful and amazingly brilliant package. I love the animated series. And they've done several movies spun out of the animated series, but none of them hit like Mask of the Phantasm. I remember watching this movie. I don't think I ever got to see it in theaters, but I remember, and this was in theaters, but I remember when it dropped on home video, I was so excited. And when you get that opening with the CG Gotham and the music, Home. You know, that was a terrible interpretation of it, but it blew me away. A great Joker story, a great Batman story, really diving into it. To me, it's one of the most real and believable Batman, Bruce Wayne romances with someone else, and then to have the Phantasm, such a great visual, obviously kind of kind of based on the Reaper character from Batman Year Two, but a complete different twist on it. Phantasm, the way that works out, Andrea, Bruce. Dude, this movie is so freaking good. It's still one of the best Batman movies of all time. At number three, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1990. Of course, based on the Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird underground comic smash hit and the animated series that shortly followed that, we had the live action movie. And I will say that even though the success of the comic book led to the success of the animated series and, and the toy line, it's really that movie, I think, that really cemented TMNT as something that was going to have durability for decades. Look at some of these other properties, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Silverhawks, Thunder cats, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, they waned in their interest. They waned in their popularity. And you can argue that that happened and has happened with TMNT throughout its history, but it's maintained relevance from decade to decade to decade. I think a lot of that has to do with this movie. It was a perfect balance of the absurd cartooniness of the animated series and the grim, gritty, realistic nature almost of the original comic book. It was a great blending 
I remember at the time there was a lot of controversy about how dark it was and that Raphael kept saying damn, but I loved it. I remember fifth grade going to the theater, watching this with my friends. We could not stop talking about it. <laughs> Seriously, this Dick Tracy and Rookie of the Year, some of my favorite movies of the early 90s, but I had to drop a nod to Rookie of the Year. Why? I don't know. But TMNT is such a freaking great movie, the 1990 version. The turtle effects work so well. The performances deliver. Casey Jones is badass. April's cool. And Shredder, come on. Shredder was dope, and so was Splinter. This movie is so good. Hey, yeah. Guess what? Coming soon to a PCP movie night near you. At number two, Batman Returns from 1992. Batman Returns isn't just my favorite Batman movie from the 90s. It isn't just my favorite from that first round of Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher films, but it is, to me, the best cinematic representation of Catwoman and the best interpretation ever of the Penguin. Danny DeVito really brought some, some, some energy to this performance as the Penguin. Just a kind of short and stout gangster, right? Burgess Meredith does a fantastic job in the original series, but it's very cartoony. This one was dark. The Penguin is freaking scary, and I love that. Same with Catwoman. She's sexy, but in an unnerving, unsettling type way. I really feel like Michael Keaton came into his own in this role in this movie. It's a shame that we didn't get to see it continue, but his performance as Bruce Wayne slash Batman to me is the best in here. And what really kicks it over the edge, come on, it's Max Shrek. That's right, Christopher Walken coming in out of nowhere, to me at least, stealing the freaking show. You got the bat, you got the cat, you got the penguin, you got penguins with rocket launchers and all kinds of stuff. You got a really great, nuanced, tragic, romantic Christmas story focused on the true horrors of loneliness and isolation. And then you have the entire thing get uplifted and uprooted by Christopher Walken's just ridiculous character of Max Shrek, which I love. The production design was fantastic. The music was the best Danny Elfman score on a Batman film. It's just such a brilliant film, such a great follow-up to the original. I think it's better than the 89 Batman film. I think the music is better. I think the performances are better. Everything about it is just glamorous, and I really feel still like there were at least one more Tim Burton, Michael Keaton Batman movie. I wish we would have got it. I'm going to tell you something real quick. That Batman 89 book ain't it. But that being said, Batman Returns, not only one of my favorite comic book movies from the 90s, one of my favorite Christmas movies as well. And at number one, Blade from 1998. There are worse things out tonight than vampires, and there are way worse comic book movies than Blade. Blade, to me, not only revitalized the energy that was going to be essential to carry on comic book movies throughout the oddies, throughout the 2000s and 10s, into today, right? We had to believe that we could have crazy action sequences. We had to, do, to believe that you could take a little known property and make something with it. And you have to rely on a brilliant performance by Wesley Snipes. The action in this movie is absolutely spectacular. It's amazing. The soundtrack to this movie, holy cow, all the hip hop stuff, Edge of the Blade by Mystical. You got Gangstar on there. You got KRS-One. You got D2E. You got the Wolfpack. Gangsta, gangsta, bounce. We got all that stuff. Then you have the second half, which is all like techno, club beats, driving, pulsating, freaking fantastic. The visuals. This is the only movie from Stephen Norrington that I can think of that I like because it ain't League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. But this movie was great. Plus, Stephen Dorff playing the, the most sexy and sinister version of Deacon Frost that's ever existed, because in the comic books, he's just some old dude. Dude, Stephen Dorff, Wesley Snipes, the soundtrack, the visuals, the interpretation of Blade into the Daywalker, kind of taking the comic book elements, updating it, letting Wesley kind of make that role his own. Blade revolutionized, revitalized so much about what we thought was possible cinematically in comic book movies, superhero movies in particular, that led, directly led, I believe, to X-Men, Spider-Man, and then Daredevil and Hulk, and then we kind of faltered, then Iron Man, and then you know the rest of the story. Blade is one of my favorite characters. I grew up loving him on the animated series in Spider-Man. I grew up loving the Night Stalkers book during the Midnight Sun days. So to see this movie, I was so freaking excited. I remember when I first started seeing ads for it. It just blew my mind. I was ready for it. I felt like I was the only person, including my friends at the theater, 
that knew this was based on a comic book. I ate every bit of that shit up and I have no regrets about it. Blade still maintains as one of my favorite movies of all time and definitely by far my favorite comic book movie of the 90s. So what do you think about my list and what's your list? What are your top five favorite movies of the 90s that are based on comic books, that are superhero movies? Let us know. I really do appreciate you guys checking out the video. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And join us over at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts, blogs, and a whole lot more. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Station. Pop, pop. Boom.